In this video, we're going to look at the de Broglie equation. And the de Broglie equation comes to us from Louis de Broglie, uh, who was a French physicist um, who was investigating wave particle duality. And we already know from the double slit experiment, you might want to go back and look at that video if you don't remember, that electrons exhibit wave particle duality. Sometimes we measure them, um, they behave like waves. Uh, other experiments, they behave like particles and sometimes at different parts of the same experiment. But there is no one measurement that measures an electron as opposed to a wave and a particle at the same time. Uh, later, we looked at the photoelectric effect um, and Einstein's explanation that uh, light comes in packets or uh, small particles known as photons. So light also can behave like a wave or a particle. And so we might wonder about other small particles that we uh, have already talked about, protons, neutrons, um, quarks. Do they exhibit this wave bar particle duality? And what about potatoes or pickup trucks or planets or solar systems? Is wave particle duality only a feature of small things um, or is it somehow a feature of all things? And the de Broglie equation gives us a way um, to convert between the wave properties of a thing and the particle properties of a thing. So uh, the de Broglie equation says that the wavelength associated with any particle in motion is Planck's constant divided by that particle's mass and its velocity. And so uh, we could think about an electron moving through the double slit experiment. If we know uh, the mass, which is measurable, and the velocity of that electron, then we can find the wavelength associated with a particular electron and we could predict, for instance, that light dark, light dark pattern. Planck's constant there, which we've talked about before, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th. And usually we give that as joules times seconds. The units you see in front of you there are the base units of a joule. So how do we put this into practice? Well, let's consider finding the wavelength of a baseball pitch. And so, a really good Major League Baseball player can throw a ball 99 miles an hour with his fastball, um, and the regulation weight of a baseball is 5.25 ounces. Now, there are a handful of assumptions, uh, somewhat dubious assumptions, that we have to make in order to do this calculation. For instance, we have to treat the baseball as not having any volume, that all of its mass is concentrated in a single point. A much easier thing to do with an electron or a quark than it is a baseball, but we'll set aside some of these dubious assumptions. We have a mass, we have a velocity, and so we can use the de Broglie equation to figure out what the wavelength of a 99 mile an hour fastball would be. Now, um, first you're going to have to do some conversions. Um, the Planck's constant is in base SI units. Miles per hour and ounces are not base SI units. So the miles per hour will have to be converted to meters per second and the ounces to kilograms. So you should pause the video, set up some game boards and carry out those conversions. Okay, hopefully you did some pausing there and you did some work and you came up with something in this neighborhood. We have Planck's constant on top and then we have the mass of the baseball in kilograms. Now notice um, we started with three significant digits in our mass um, and now I have written four there, but I've underlined that third significant digit um, primarily because I don't want to round off till I get to the end. Um, same thing is taking place here with the velocity. Um, was in miles per hour. We've now put it in meters per second, and I've taken more digits from the calculator than I need, but I've underlined that third significant digit. So we multiply all this stuff together, um, or sorry, take the top, and we divide it by both numbers on the bottom. And we get ourselves a wavelength for the baseball, 1.01 times 10 to the negative 34th meters. And so we might ask the question, if a baseball uh, being thrown at 99 miles an hour has a wavelength, why don't we see it move through the air in a kind of an up-down, up-down pattern? Um, it would be fantastic if you could throw that pitch. You would be set for life after one year of service. Um, it would be unhittable. But you, you, you might see why we don't notice that it does that, because when you're wave peaks are 10 to the negative 34th meters apart. Um, to our eye, that's going to seem like a straight line. The wavelengths are too small to be noticed or to be measured. That's my dog showing his enthusiasm. Okay, so um, what if we take something more, um, our speed and wave particle duality. We already know that electrons exhibit this wave particle duality. And so if you do a little digging, 
um, you can find uh, an approximate velocity of an electron moving in an electron orbital, uh, the mass of an electron measured originally by J.J. Thompson's experiment. Um, uh, but that experiment has been uh, refined and repeated to get better and better values. So we have that uh, velocity, we have that mass, and so now we can use the de Broglie equation as we did before. Um, of course, these values are already in base units, so you can plug them right in, Planck's constant over that velocity, over that mass. You might think about what do you expect the exponent to be? So we're gonna have 10 to the negative 34th on top, 10 to the negative 31st on bottom, and 10 to the sixth on bottom. So you would expect um, something in the neighborhood of, well, 10 to the negative 10th. So you get that wavelength at 3.31 times 10 to the negative 10th meters, which is still quite small. And yet that value is at least with modern instrumentation, um, a measurable wavelength um, for us to record. All right, so we have a wavelength. What about a frequency? Well, we have our standard equation of uh, wavelength times frequency equals the speed of light. Or if we rearrange it to solve for frequency, um, we have this equation, frequency equals C times lambda. Okay, so um, go ahead and pause the video, do that calculation, see if you can't find yourself a frequency for this electron wave. Okay, if you plugged your numbers in there, again, 10 to the eighth divided by 10 to the negative 10th. You want to think about about what that exponent should be. Um, and so we actually get 9.07, three significant digits times 10 to the 17th hertz. Let's take this one more step um, from Einstein and the photoelectric um, equation. Uh, we know that the energy of any photon of electromagnetic radiation or any uh, wavelength is going to be uh, the frequency times Planck's constant. So if we take that frequency 9.07 times 10 to the 17 hertz, multiply it by Planck's constant, we can find the energy for that electron. Um, and we should get 6.01 times 10 to the negative 16th joules. You should take a second, plug that into your calculator, make sure you get um, an, uh, an agreement with my number there uh, so that you know that you can calculate these. Okay, so set your pencils down for a second and let's just look at um, some equation substitutions here. If um, the frequency or the energy um, uh, of a certain frequency is hf, and we know that frequency is c over lambda, we can do a quick substitution um, for frequency, and we can just go ahead and plug the wavelength um, function in there. So energy is going to be hc over lambda. So we can actually skip this middle step here if we know the wavelength. We can dive right into this equation. Uh, this bottom equation to find the wavelength. But we also know that wavelength is h over mv um, from the de Broglie equation. Well, this equation we have at the bottom here is 1 over lambda, not lambda. So 1 over lambda would be mv over h. So let's do that substitution. If, wavelength, uh, if 1 over wavelength is mv over h, and we multiply that by hc, well, we might notice we have two h's in there. So let's get rid of those. And now, I have this equation, E equals CMV, uh, or the speed of light times the mass of the particle times the velocity of the particle. Well, this electron is moving at 10 to the sixth uh, meters per second. What if we were to accelerate that electron? What if we were to have that electron move at the speed of light? Or if it were a photon, it would certainly be doing that because it would be um, a particle of light. And so it would be moving at, um, uh, it would be moving at the speed of light. Well, that would give us two c's. And what do you have then? Well, you have E equals mc squared. Um, so this is in part where um, that derivation comes from. Okay, so let's go back to our baseball. Um, we have a wavelength. Can you find a frequency? You should pause the video and see if you can do that and give you good practice on those calculations. Okay. You should have gotten for your frequency something in the neighborhood of this. Uh, it's an extremely short wavelength. The mean is going to be an extremely high frequency. Um, and then uh, we could do the energy equals h times the frequency. And you end up with a much bigger energy than the energy of an electron, as one would expect that a baseball would have a higher energy than the energy of an electron. Um, now, again, we're never going to be able to measure the wave properties of a baseball. Um, 
not least of which because we're making a bunch of assumptions about that baseball, as I said before, that are a little bit dubious. But even if we take those assumptions into consideration, um, the wavelengths and the frequencies are way too short, way too high um, for us to, for any instrumentation that we have to measure those. Now, if you want to measure the energy, you could just step in front of it at home plate and try to take that free base. Um, I don't recommend it. Um, but for some reason, small particles um, behave differently and these wave particle um, uh, dualities manifest themselves in very strange ways and have to be taken into account with quantum particles. And so the real question is, is where do you have to begin to take these into consideration? Where does the really small begin? And the answer to that question is somewhere between cats and atoms.